Ladies and gentlemen, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency, Rigadi Gashagwa. Welcome, Your Excellency. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the good people from the Father State, Karibuni Hapa. Uh, we have had a long meeting about the situation in the country, the rains, the floods, the displacements, and the confusions surrounding the whole space. Whether there is El Nino or not, whether there is uh, above rain or not, and the whole of that. Maybe <clears throat> before I make the statement on behalf of the team that we have met, with, here, with us here are cabinet secretaries, principal secretaries, development partners, humanitarian agencies, and everybody concerned in uh, this space of uh, emergency response. Before I make the statement, I want to call the director of Meteorological Department to tell the country what it is, so that then from there we can be able to proceed. Where is the director? Thank you, Your Excellency. Naham Jambo Ananchi. I want to point out that uh, as initially given in the forecast, we have El Nino in this short rain season 2023, and we do apologize for the lack of communication or miscommunication because uh, that was a big mistake, but uh, we are sorry about that. And moving forward, let's prepare ourselves for the enhanced rainfall as a result of the, the, the El Nino phenomenon that we are in at this time. Asante. Thank you. I think the matter is settled. El Nino it is. Welcome to this briefing. Over the last few weeks, many parts of the country have been receiving more than normal rains. This has threatened lives and livelihoods, especially downstream. I thank you, the media, for your work in raising awareness on the floods and the humanitarian situation across the nation. I would like to confirm that the government, working with partners, is on top of it. More than 19 counties in Asal and non-Asal areas have been adversely affected by the continuing heavy rains. Two sections of roads have been cut off in counties such as Wajia, Isiolo, Mandera, Marsabit, Tana River, Garissa, among others. This has reduced access via land. Three families have been displaced, especially in northern Kenya and downstream in areas like the county of Tana River. Four, Efforts are ongoing on documentation of missing persons, livestock lost and the crops destroyed to the enhanced rains. We'll be making this data public once confirmed. Five, we face the risk of rivers breaking their banks and in this regard we ask our people to be on the lookout. Through the National Emergency Response Committee that I chair, the government and other partners have taken a raft of measures to reduce the negative impact, impact of the rains, including one, deployment of aircrafts by the Kenya Defense Forces for evacuation of marooned families to safe grounds. As we speak, we are delivering KCS, KCSC examinations to areas disconnected due to damaged roads. In working with our development partners, counties, and other key agencies, we are distributing food, maize, rice, beans, and cooking oil, and non-food items to tens of families affected to reduce their suffering. We have activated multi-agency teams and mobilized technical and financial resources for easier response. 
The Emergency Response Committee is coordinating a consolidated approach for efficiency and effective action. This is preventing duplication of the response as well as ensuring no place or person is left behind. We are also supplying safe and clean water and addressing other sanitation concerns in the, in the various rescue centers. We are also monitoring the progress of the rain patterns for measures of averting catastrophic outcomes. The ministries of health and agriculture are also on the ground monitoring the situation to prevent possible outbreak of diseases, including animal diseases. Mobile health facilities are being put in place in areas where infrastructure has been destroyed or marooned. The Kenya Defense Forces is running an operation center at the Kenya Defense Forces headquarters. The Ministry of Interior and National Administration is providing security response round the clock and assisting in monitoring the situation and updating all the other agencies in real time. The Ministry of Roads and Transport is undertaking emergency repair and rehabilitation of roads to improve access. We are also unclogging waterways waste, and other drainage systems. With weather projections pointing to a possible prolonged rains up to the first quarter of 2024, we are keen on sharing safety messaging, especially sanitizing of communities living in lowlands and landslide prone areas to evacuate to safer grounds. We are also sharing distress call numbers with the public to ensure that people can report and ask for swift assistance in case of emergencies. On this note, we will call upon you, the good people of our media, to work with us in raising awareness on the trades and risks to avert loss of, loss of lives and livelihoods. Again, we appeal to our development partners for enhanced financial and logistical support. Two, we also appeal to the private sector to complement the government's interventions by setting aside and educating more resources. On the other hand, we take this opportunity to request the county government to reallocate resources to mitigate this emergency. I would like to call upon humanitarian organizations, counties and our development partners and other stakeholders and communities to continue working as a team to prevent escalation of the humanitarian situation. I take this opportunity to assure the nation that all necessary resources will be deployed to ensure their safety, security and comfort for our people and their property. I thank you. Iko Swali. You are satisfied? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, just one moment for our group photo as the sound team takes the, the mic. Let's move forward, please.